Hey, welcome back to the show. You know, some people who got COVID-19 early in the pandemic still haven't recovered. Their lingering symptoms are often different than the infection itself. Brain fog, exhaustion, joint pain, insomnia. Well, in their new book, Chronic, Dr. Stephen Phillips and his former patient explore the parallels between long COVID and autoimmune conditions. Why does it happen? And can what we've learned about other chronic illnesses help us unravel the mysteries of long COVID? You were in the middle of writing this book, Chronic, when you decided to add a new chapter to the book. Yeah, we were writing a book about a pandemic in the midst of the greatest pandemic in 100 years. And the book is about chronic illness, the underlying causes, infections that can cause chronic illness. And lo and behold, we have COVID swept the globe in a matter of months. And it's a major cause of chronic illness, long COVID. Mm -hmm. So it couldn't be more opportune. So we had to write a chapter. And so some of the chronic illnesses you talk about are autoimmune disorders and such. And you believe there are serious parallels between long COVID and the autoimmune epidemic. Well, the symptom list of autoimmune and chronic illnesses that we see day to day have been in practice for 25 years. And the patients that I see, this is represented in the long COVID population. They have this long COVID panel, which is a blood test. We look for inflammatory markers. And we say, just for kicks, we're going to send this panel off in our chronic illness patients and see how they compare to the patients diagnosed with long COVID. It's identical. Wow. So there's only so many inflammatory pathways that the body can take in response to infection. And there are common themes and how you can go about getting people well. But it isn't common that doctors will kind of go that extra mile to say, well, it doesn't look so abnormal, but let's check it out. And, and Dana, you were, were one of those patients. Um, you're a former doctor, of, a former patient, I should say, of Dr. Phillips. How did you know something was wrong? And what was your experience navigating the healthcare system to find answers? I imagine that had to be frustrating. It was, and what you just said about, um, you know, doctors not going the extra mile was exactly my experience. And I know this is also very common throughout the long COVID community. So I was at a wedding in New Jersey and uh, got a bite uh, from a tick on my shoulder, came back to New York City where I lived um, at the time and had a, had a little bullseye around it. I knew it was Lyme. I got three weeks of antibiotics at the emergency clinic around the corner. And they said I would be fine and not to worry about it. And a few months later, I woke up, my breast was swollen. I had rashes all over my chest and my sternum. I had severe weakness, uh, fibromyalgia I was diagnosed with. I had severe uh, insomnia, anxiety, depression, all sudden onset. I never had these symptoms before. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was going from doctor to doctor, the best doctors in New York City. I went to about a dozen. And by December, I couldn't breathe. And it turned out that I was actually in heart failure. Uh -huh. uh, they all kept saying, it's not Lyme. It's not, I kept saying, what about that tick bite? I did have Lyme, mm. you know, it's cured with the antibiotics you use. Well, I don't really know how that makes sense. Cause my symptoms got so horrible. Like after I stopped anyway, very common story, very commonly unknown in the medical community. And it took, um, somebody referring me to Dr. Phillips in order to save my life. I mean, you really have to be your own advocate until you find a doctor Yes. like Dr. Phillips helped you. Dr. Phillips, how common are autoimmune disorders? They're incredibly common. I mean, the, the estimates vary, but up to 50 million people in the United States alone, you know, have an estimate to suffer from some form of autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. The issue that people don't talk about is that there is a slew of this. Lyme is probably the big chronic infection that people have heard about, but they have not heard about Bartonella. They haven't heard about the many, many others that I can list. And the data on this is really extraordinary. There's so much published, you know, hardcore medical data in the best journals linking chronic infections to chronic illness, but it's really not a profitable area for pharmaceutical industry to go after. You know, these tend to be generic cheap medications and they're not the multi-billion dollar, you know, immune suppressants that people take for years and years. Is there hope for people with long COVID? Um, what treatment options can be gleaned from other autoimmune problems? Well, the first thing is that, uh, you know, ounce of prevention is always better than a pound of cure. And, you know, I've been treating COVID with early treatment options since they first became, you know, e efficacious since we first knew. Like, for example, um, everyone knows about Paxlovid now, but before that, there's been data about fluvoxamine, which is a common antidepressant. There are drugs like that that can improve the lot for COVID patients in general. So if you can prevent long COVID, that's the best thing that you can do. And then in terms of looking for uh, you know, causes and, and treatments for long COVID, 
you have to define the groups. Some patients have vascular damage and simple things like, you know, having their intake of um, cocoa and black tea, which have uh, chemicals that stimulate the bone marrow to have stem cells migrate back to the lining of blood vessels to help regrow them. It could be, you know, a simple additive that people can do to their lifestyle to help them heal quicker. Other people, we have to look for reactivated infections. People don't realize that having a bad case of COVID can upset your immune system and previously asymptomatic infections become sometimes symptomatic. And we've seen that in my practice and we've identified those patients. A lot of them have gotten better just that way. Dana, last question for you. Do you have a message for people with long COVID after going through what you've experienced? I definitely know that there's hope. Um, I came back from the dead with heart failure and many, many other symptoms. I had 38 out of 60 symptoms on the checklist and here I am. Wow. Thanks to Dana and Dr. Phillips for sharing their knowledge and experience on this.